We're here at the Devolver Digital booth. I'm about to play Demon Throttle. Please tell everyone your name at home. Uh, bonjour, I am uh, Jérémy Rams with Mayhem, Executive Director of the Counter Intelligence Corporation to develop our digital entertainment, a subsidiary for Parker Zilli, Happy Fun Time, Cayman and Eller Show Holdings. You made all of that up. No, Monsieur, this is my title. Are you sure? Yes, I forgot the hashtag crimes at the end, but other than that, it is my title. We will kill you if you do not come work for us. And I said, this is, of course, an opportunity I cannot say no to. Well, you've heard it here first, folks. Devolver Digital might kill you if you don't work for them. I'm here with the team, the brilliant minds behind uh, Demon Throttle uh, from uh, Doink Soft. Guys, thank you so much for your time. So you guys obviously are very passionate when you come to your projects. This game, it, when, since I've ever played it, is just beaming with charisma and charm and fun. And it just feels so on brand for what you guys do as a, as a team. Uh, when it came to Demon Throttle, what was like the, the cohesion you guys had? So I know that you sort of worked Correct me if I'm wrong, you started working on this during the pandemic, right? This was like your first remote game from home as a team coming together. Uh -huh. I think it went pretty smoothly. I think the, the thing is that we have uh, another project at the same time was a little difficult. And also it's really, really hard to uh, copy the files, the source control is what they call it for, for video games. It's hard to keep that stuff straight yeah. and to make sure everybody has the right versions of stuff. But I think overall it's a really smooth process. We love working together, so. Yeah. We've been making video games together for a while, and we're all really good friends. So, and we all know what we like, and we like similar stuff. So a lot of times things just work. It's just like, do this, and it's like, yeah, that's sick. You know, and we've been like, you know, charm and humor and, you know, really good feeling shit is like, we're all about you. One thing I liked about the collaboration uh, specifically was um, making the cutscenes happen, because like, I think we've always kind of wanted to do something with that Ninja Gaiden cutscene vibe where you have the big sprites and, you know, like the illustration approach of pixel art, you know? And um, I thought it was fun because we got uh, the person who did the art for the cutscenes, Morocco. Um, he's worked on Gato Robato with us, he worked on Devolver Bootlegs with us. And it was, it was really cool, like, sending him a really crappy animatic made in Flash. And he comes back with these like beautifully designed pixel art. And if you look at the originals, they're so sketchy compared to what it ended up being. So yeah. that was really cool. And it was like the same thing that Britt said. So one thing you guys are really known for, at least in my opinion, is your humor is next level. Like you guys are so freaking funny. When you're playing your, I, very few companies make me like belly laugh when I'm playing their games. And even in the intro alone, just the whole or something, just the, the out the gate, just sets the tone of what to expect. And even the dialogue between bosses, like, how do you go about doing that? I think I'm a funny guy, I couldn't come up with that. Like, well, well, what was that like for you guys? To be honest, it is way toned down to what it originally was. <laughs> the ballroom was kind of like, you know, maybe we could be a little bit more subtle about this. <laughs> Yeah, Devolver very frequently says, you guys need to be a little less funny. What? Uh, no, they, they don't say that. No. <laughs> they love us. One of the first things we came up with specifically that ended up in the game was this joke, like, that demon kissed my wife. That demon kissed my wife. Or something. It used to be something a little different, but now it's that demon kissed my wife or something. Um, and that was just a joke we were saying back and forth. We we're like, oh, that'd be so funny if that was in an actual game. And, you know, uh, I'm just glad we could follow through with that and have it in a, have a ridiculous joke like that just be the centerpiece of a game at PAX. So it's pretty, it's pretty the, cool. The best part about it is that that's, it's like not the one joke, which is sets the tone for the whole game in the intro, isn't just the one joke. Like you got, when, when you're fighting bosses, when the, when the characters interact, there's definitely this level of, of comedic cohesion that I think you guys, have like followed throughout the game, which I think is really awesome. Yeah, I think the approach was just to write bad and write silly, you know, and just like keep it fun and light, you know, and um, have the characters make fun of each other. So like, even though it's a tiny little sprite on screen, you feel like this character actually has an identity. So one of the fascinating things that people at home may not know about, 
I know about it because I know you guys that this game is exclusively being released physically on Nintendo Switch. I imagine that like a lot of people are mad about that, but I think that's actually really rad that you guys are like, hey, if you want to experience our game, you can get it physically. What is that process like for you guys in Devolver Digital? Is that something that you're like, you're hesitant about, or like now that you've had time with it, it's like a really cool thing? I think originally when I was uh, prototyping the game, I wanted to make it into just an arcade cabinet. So when we showed them the game, just, hey, look at this other thing we're working on. Uh, Nigel pitched it to us. I'm like, that's really in line with what I wanted to do in the first place. Is yeah. I want to do a physical collector's thing. Yeah. Um, I think a, a, a important thing to note, I think, is that like it isn't like a limited game. Like yeah. we're gonna have as many copies as people want to buy it. Yeah. And like we want to keep selling them forever. Like we don't want it to be like a FOMO thing. One thing about the physical aspect that is gonna be really cool is that you get this instruction booklet, and you might play the game and be like. I don't understand this or that, and you open up the instruction booklet, there's hot tips, there's, I there's a hidden that. cheat code in there. I love that. Um, and a lot of the game mechanics are explained in the book. There's yeah. no tutorial in the game. It's just like a Nintendo game. It's just like in an old Nintendo game, if you don't have the booklet in Star Tropics, you can't beat this one part, right? There, there's something weird about buying a PS4, PS, PS5 game, opening the, the case, it's empty. and there's a place to hold it, <laughs> and inside it's either like a pre-order code for another game or like yeah. DLC, but not a manual right. that gives you that insight. And I yeah. think that when we were kids, that insight being yeah. in the manual was so important. Like Star Tropics is great, Earthworm Jim, you didn't know the lore of Earthworm Jim unless you read that yeah. booklet. And like, it's so important. So I, I think that's so rad that it's not just about the physical thing, but it's yeah. about the whole package. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for letting us play Demon Throttle. Uh, everyone at home, uh, you can get the game physically on Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Is there a website people can go and pick it up at? Uh, DemonThrottle.com. DemonThrottle.com. Awesome. Thank you very much.